Hello, welcome to this recap of Sketch A Day Live from Friday, May 22nd, where I show you how to draw this cool watch sketch page like an industrial designer. As always, thanks for the suggestions and your input during the chat on the live streams. But before we begin, I want you to hit that subscribe button, turn on alerts, because if you don't, you'll miss the live show and you'll miss when I upload videos. You can also find me on the Instagram at sketchaday.com. You can find me on Twitter at Daily Sketches, and I'm pretty easy to find on Facebook as well. Head on over to sketchaday.com. Why? Well, it's a great way to support what we're doing here. We've got a store with Procreate brushes and assets and more coming soon. We also have stickers and even a poster of sketches. So if you're interested, check it out. Let me know what you think, and I hope you find something good there. You can always donate using the PayPal link in the video frame or Venmo, whichever you prefer. Some of you have asked in the past, so I put that there to give you the opportunity to do so. Details are also included on the video description below. Well, thanks guys, and I hope you enjoy. Like, literally his style in a package. Um, my approach tends to be a bit more agnostic to style, and so I create tools that I think are the best approximation of uh, what I consider to be good digital sketching. So everyone has a different approach. Um, when I do it though, I'm going to do a watch guys. <clears throat> when I do it though, I, let's see, how do I want to do this watch? When I do it, I'll actually sample textures from real life. I'm not saying Roshan doesn't. I'm just describing my process to be very clear here. I don't want to upset anyone. I've been upsetting people all week. Um, but I like to... This is like some chunky Mark Newson style thing. Um, I like to take pictures of real things. I'll take real watercolor ink, for example, and use that to then create the what's called the stamp <clears throat> or sample. And there's an art to that as far as how you sample those things. Um, there's a certain art to that for sure. So yeah, in, in a lot of ways it's, it's challenging, particularly time consuming. Like on Tuesday, I sat in this chair that I'm sitting in for like, I swear it was like 12 hours. I was just going hard my poor kids but I was committed to just getting it done I'm just gonna do a simple watch face guys um, I was committed to just getting it done so it will be done I like giant crowns on watches I know it's ridiculous but I do love a good giant crown, this thing, in case you're wondering what I mean. Obnoxious details as well. As I've been uh, designing for, for a while now, I'm trying, I'm starting to realize or come into the fact that I do have a certain aesthetic approach. I like simple, but I like chunky as well. It's like chunky funky. So this project I'm working on, this lighting related project that I'll show you guys eventually. A lot of stuff is chunky and funky for that project. But I like it. I feel like it takes, takes time as a designer to kind of come into your own and figure out what your aesthetic is, meaning what's your visual approach. That's not to say you can't be flexible. Certainly as a consultant, which is what I do, among other things, you kind of have to be flexible. All right, let's make this band leather. Just a little cheat on the back here for this ellipse. Eagle eyes would have caught it.
All right. So I don't have a watch in front of me, so I'm not, and I don't wear watches with straps that buckle like this. So I'm just kind of going off memory here and hoping that the right strap is in the right place. There's a little, I don't even know what this part's called, but keeps the strap here from flopping out. Yeah, possibly Tom, but life's short. Can't get upset about everything, right? Thanks for joining me on Sketch Day Live. If, if you've never joined before, I do this at least three times a week, hoping to do it more, where I kind of just hang out, draw, chat, take suggestions from you guys. I guess today's theme is just yellow. That's what I'm, that's what I've kind of settled on. We're going with doing lots of quick marker sketches. I did have a request last time for a doodle style doodle D O O D L E. So I could do that on one of these or even over actually what I'll do is overlay this after I'm done and show you the difference and kind of how, how I would approach that different style of sketching. Some stitches here. Real quick, quick and dirty, fast. When I was in school, my professor, he told us something that's kind of stuck with me over the years. The best way to have a good idea is to have a lot of them. So I like to sketch fast when I can, sketch a lot. All that good stuff. All right, let's do the case real quick. <clears throat> And how about we make this, hmm. I could do black and then chrome for the trim. Or something dark on the back, I should say. This is just a neutral gray seven. Which means I can go lighter or darker if I need to. And now for the trim, just gonna take this cool gray. The part closest to the buckle which keeps the strap down is called a keeper. The second is called a free loop. Okay, thanks Roshan. Did you design a ton of watches or you just love watches? I just have my Apple watch. That's all I, all I use. I used to collect watches and then, you know, Apple watch happened and now my watches sit in a box somewhere. Yes, I'm an Apple guy. Okay, but like I said, the theme is yellow today just by default. So let's do a yellow face. I was gonna do a leather strap actually. Svetlana, welcome, welcome back. Thank you so much for the suggestions last time. I'm almost done with my Photoshop brushes, I was telling everyone, so check those out soon. All right, a little bit of gray here for these details. I actually would, I would wear the hell out of this watch. <laughs> Again, it's, um, it's that funky, chunky aesthetic, like I was saying, that I like. I forgot to refill my marker from last stream. So maybe we'll make it a thing where every stream I refill a marker. 
and you guys get to see me do it. So once again, <laughs> why I love Copic markers, I can... Take the nib out and then, actually I should do this over a scrap piece of paper so I don't wreck my drawing. But place a few drops in here. I'm gonna make this one juicy though. All right, and usually, I mean, you, you can get what's called a booster. It's like this long needle you screw on and then you shove, shove it down in there. All right. You kind of see it's getting a little, little moist. And on this tip, I'm actually going to put a couple drops in here just to revive it. And then now, just push that in. And my marker is refilled, just like that. So one of these bottles will refill your marker, I think 11 or 12 times, something crazy like that. So that's why, that's why I love these Copic markers, okay? I'm not gonna do an alligator skin strap. That took forever <laughs> last time, and I'm trying to get... Uh... Oh, okay, Roshan designed one as a student. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get a ton of sketches out today, just I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. So why not? All right, kind of scrubbing in a all over pattern here. This is just gonna give the, the strap some texture. And as I come over this spot that I shaded already, it should make it a little bit darker as well. All right, can do the same thing here. Shadow core, highlight. All right, so <clears throat> if you think about the elements of whatever you're sketching in terms of primitives, it makes it really easy. You know, here's a, if you, if you were to consider the cross section of the body here, that's gonna determine the way the light flows here on these. Let me refer to what Roshan said. This is a free loop. <laughs> so right by the free loop, right? Just a little bit of darker marker there gives me a shadow and then I can just scrub this one time. Markers are translucent, the ink is anyway, so remember, you can build up. You can build up opacity with the marker. So going back to Tom's question about making brushes, yeah, understanding how real tools work totally helps too. So that's why I think if you have, if you have experience drawing, it makes it easy to um, make those brushes, but if you have no idea what you're doing, then it's a lot harder. So when I started making brushes back in college, and I actually use those brushes for a long time, but the ones I make now are just way better because you just have a better, I'm gonna cheat right there. You have a better understanding of how your tools work, how you draw, all that good stuff. So Sketch A Day Live, thanks for joining. The theme today is yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, just yellow. That's the theme. So, let's add some contrast here. This one I'm just going to keep gray. And the same goes for drawing. If you understand the mechanics of things like light and form and shape, it makes it easy to break the rules, so to speak. So typically, if you're buying a set of brushes, buy it from someone who knows how to draw really well, because chances are they're gonna put all of those qualities, those lessons learned, over years into the way that tool behaves, right? It's 
It's also a great way to support your artists if you if they release brushes and you pick them up. Um, I know Roshan has a set coming out soon, so if you're a fan of his, check out his Instagram. I think it's just at Roshan Hakim, so you can check that out. But that's my that's my spiel on on brushes for you guys today. Do you guys like Avatar: The Last Airbender? I'm trying to get into it, but I'm really struggling. That main character kid, I'm just like, you're really annoying. I know, controversial opinion, because everyone's watching it right now. At least not everyone, but I have a lot of friends watching it. So I tried to watch it with my kids, but man, I'm struggling. I think it's because I, I grew up on Dragon Ball Z, and I watched Dragon Ball Super, which was awesome. Loved it. So yeah, I don't watch a ton of TV, but <clears throat> if I'm going to watch TV, I want to make sure it's something really good. Vegeta is asking, can I make a drawing or make a video about drawing circles in different perspectives? You're in luck, my friend. I have a YouTube at, that you're on <laughs> with 300 videos. Um, so I'm happy to, I'll, I'll actually just pull it up here. There's a really popular video I did a few years ago. Uh, I don't know why it's so popular, but every month people watch it. Um, so a circle in perspective is called an ellipse. All right, so I'm gonna send you two videos in chat here. So there's one. And here's another. Boom. So you can check those out if you want to draw circles in perspective. All right, let's wrap this guy up. Uh, yeah, I've got time for like two or three more sketches. So I'm trying to remember what suggestions were given. For life. Watch for life. Okay. I will check it out. Is that animated? Is it a drama? What is it? And when I watch TV, I usually watch it if I'm like while I'm working on something. It'll just kind of be playing in the background, which probably sets a terrible example for my children, but that's how we do. Oh, shoot. Okay. I need to. There you are. I love this pen. <clears throat> it's a Fa Faber Castle, Faber Castle uh, Pit Artist Pen, <clears throat> and I like it because it's not super opaque. It's water-based white ink. I know I promised a video on white inks. I'll be sure to get to that. So leather, typically you'll have some creases, things like that happening. So I'm just trying to capture that. Also highlight some edges here, stitches. Okay, I can just do that with this pen. Super handy. Because it's not as opaque as the other inks that I use. So it's a good in-between. Now on the face itself, if I want to make things really pop, you know, in some of these chrome areas or whatever, or it might be the edge of the glass. I can use my opaque white ink. Let's kind of help that out. And just to finish out the whole thing, a little bit of line weight to kind of help. Uh, I would like to buy these smartwatches if they'd be real. Ah, <laughs> thanks, Fetlana. Of course, we're gonna do our Scribble logo like we always do. Um, and I mentioned this one just being kind of a supporting sketch. So whenever that's the case, I like to just use a little gray marker, kind of hit, hit it a little bit, enough to maybe show a little form. Call it good, can even add a little bit of a shadow here on the outside and then punch the line weight just a little bit more, <clears throat> say on this side.
Okay. Now that has its own presence, but it's not overwhelming our main sketch here. Adding a shadow can help the sketch pop as well. All right, we can add notes. Leather. I do have a video on how to make notes in your sketch as well. That's a weird arrow, but I'll, I'll keep it. Crown. Uh, I think Roshan said this was called a keeper. Not typically how I would annotate a sketch, but just want to show you the visual impact of annotating a sketch. <clears throat> and how it can help that sketch just feel richer. It's also a way to invite people to look at your sketch because what you're suggesting with a note is that there's something of value here or something worth noting, <laughs> seeing for lack of a better, better word. All right, so two, two freehand watch sketches. Well, thanks for watching. Definitely hit subscribe, turn on alerts if you've made it this far. Much love, thank you, and appreciation. And I hope to catch you next time on one of our live streams. We go live on Wednesdays, usually around 4 or 5 Pacific. Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific. That one's a lock. And Sundays, somewhere between 12 and 2 Pacific. So keep your eyes open, turn on those alerts, and hit subscribe. Well, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time right here on Sketch Day.